Hello, and welcome to the Bankers Tech Talk video series, keeping up with the developments in the fintech space. I'm Joy McKnight, Managing Editor at The Banker, and I'm joined by Jamie Burke, CEO of Outlier Ventures, a blockchain and web 3.0 venture capital firm. Jamie, thanks so much for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. I know recently you released sort of the state of a blockchain report. Can you tell me some of the trends that came out of that report and your research? There's general pessimism in the space about the state of crypto and blockchain. Mm. Um, since the highs and the bull run of the ICO mania tailing off in 2018. If you look at the stats, both in terms of capital being raised and then also how you might look at the health of these networks, mm. things are actually quite positive. Um, so there are still um, some gaps that need to be filled, but on the whole, 2019 is looking like um, just under four billion is going to be deployed into blockchain generally, mm -hmm. including venture and private equity and a number of other um, mechanisms. Um, and that's on par with 16 and 17. It's about a third of 18, but it's nine times 2013. So mm -hmm. um, it's definitely not dead. It looks like there's a bit of a healthy recovery. Um, one of the challenges is that so 50% of that is seed, which is mm. great. So it's a really healthy, early stage ecosystem. Um, but there is a big lack of Series A plus capital. And in an industry which requires a lot of capital, um, primarily for things like you know, regulatory arbitrage, how you navigate that space, legal fees. Um, I was just saying Blockstack, it took $2 million to file a Reg A to, to issue a token in the US. So that's prohibitively high. Mm. So if projects can't tap into later stage capital or follow-on capital, um, the fail rate's going to be higher. And so that's what we've seen. Everything looks fairly typical for venture, um, but we're seeing this kind of lack of follow-on capital. And we think that's contributing to a higher fail rate within blockchain startups. And the investment, where is it really going to? Because I know, again, you've done an even more recent report, which is really on investment. So what kind of trends are you seeing? What kind of areas um, is getting the most funding? So uh, looking outside of kind of the more speculative component happening in the secondary markets, if you're looking from a kind of venture context, mm. um, what we're seeing are broadly two trends. So um, you kind of have capital that's going into what you might class as fintech with a subset which is called DeFi, decentralized finance. And then the other one is broadly data. And that can, that's broken down into both analytics. Mm. So um, primarily institutional markets trying to understand this asset class um, and trying to understand fundamentals. Um, and then most interestingly, AI. So the combination of blockchain and AI, fortuitously for us, that has been the cornerstone of our thesis um, for at least uh, the three, four years. My last question is really about what's making a lot of waves um, across the financial industry, which is the announcement that Facebook was going to launch its own cryptocurrency, Libra. Sort of what do you think is the potential of that and how much of it is really going to disrupt the financial industry as we know it? Yeah, so I mean, if I'm wearing my kind of crypto hat, I think the community's quite split. So mm. on the one hand, um, you can very easily pull it apart and say, well, it's not decentralized, it's not really a cryptocurrency. Um, and of course, you know, Facebook doesn't have the best reputation um, to be trusted with what it's going to do with the data that's going to be coming from um, um, from Libra and these kind of financial payments. And can they be trusted to not pair that with social data, mm. um, which, of course, would be the kind of holy grail for their advertising model. On the flip side to that, um, this has kind of taken um, crypto mainstream. Um, you know, People like you are talking about it and asking about it. Um, and that's especially important when the kind of ICO mania took a lot of the shine off the space, um, led a lot of people to be quite pessimistic. This is kind of in, in, in some ways validated it um, mm. that a top tier kind of blue chip tech company is, is looking at this. You know, Facebook have a lot of financial uh, firepower and therefore legal firepower. And, you know, coming back to what I just said earlier about Blockstack and a number of especially US entities trying to issue tokens, mm. it's just cost prohibitive. And each one of them is having to duplicate this work um, uh, by their legal teams just to be able to issue a token to birth these kind of digital economies. Um, so my hope is that at least having somebody in the room that has kind of deeper pockets, that is used to kind of navigating for better or worse regulatory environments, um, should be helpful towards the industry overall. Um, 
So, so it's a, a bit of a split decision, but coming back to kind of, I guess, the core of your question, what does this mean for banking? Mm. Um, if you think about the, the kind of user population that they have, um, they are bigger than most countries. And you could argue overnight, even if only a small percentage of their user base adopt this, and they could become uh, the largest fintech company and potentially even the largest like, non-bank or unbank um, mm. in the world. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your insights, Jamie. No problem.